All right, welcome back to Amatsu Sumi. When I was with Mana in her room, she's sitting on the floor looking off into space. Mana, I got her name from the doorway. Yes, you did, but can I come over there? どうぞ. Thank you. I sit down next to her, making sure I don't touch her. Even though we're not touching, though, I still feel the cold radiate from her skin. I've never felt it this strongly. Is it a change in my perception caused by her Kotodama? Or has her own condition gotten worse independently of me? Nothing really. I just feel like being near you. And I need that someone alongside me to listen to this Christmassy music. And how to lift up those spirits for the upcoming Christmas in about 8 months. But if you don't want me here, I can go somewhere else. She looks hard at my face. It's as if she's trying to weigh my my intentions. Okay. I look up at the ceiling. The snowflakes are still falling out of thin air. It's cold, but beautiful too. So. She holds out her hand, cupped as if to catch the falling snow. But as soon as each snowflake touches her hand, it silently disappears. She speaks softly, gazing at her hand. Do you dislike the snow mana? Nozomi says the words on her deathbed had become a katadama. Heard only by mana, they had weighed on her like a curse ever since. She shrugs, then hugs herself and shivers. The adults back at the village had tried everything they could think of to free Mana from this scares and failed. Oh! Knowing that she would be stuck with it for the rest of her life, she must have, she must have made her peace with it. And it's possible that she thinks the same way about me too. <coughs> it kind of felt like a bee was stuck in my throat, honestly. Not really, but it's a good topic. Until now, I haven't talked to her much about the snow. I'm kind of glad to hear that some of the village people tried to uh, cancel not only Skododama, but it ultimately failed, huh? Just because talking about it will inevitably lead to talking about Nozomi's death. It's a sad memory for me, and surely an even sadder one for Mana, who was Nozomi's own twin sister. But I've always wondered about the snow. Even early on, when the village adults were practically trying to get rid of it, Mana never seemed too bothered by it. It was almost as if she knew from the beginning that their efforts wouldn't succeed. Ah, but if you don't want to talk about it, we don't have to. We can talk about something else. Or we don't have to talk about anything at all. It would be nice to have a conversation with her. But it's more important, important to me right now that I be by her side. Even if we don't talk. She looks at me curiously, her expression softening. Well, I do want you to cancel your Kotodama, though. Uh, but, but, but I'm worried about your health, too. Uh, Kotodama's trunk is just must be put in quite a strain on her body. 
Especially since its duration is indefinite. But Mana Shiro knows her limits. And how to use Kotodama safely a lot better than I do. And yet she still spoke to Kotodama, knowing all that. The dead I resolve means I won't be able to convince her with the shallow arguments. She also told me not to apologize. That means that the apologies aren't going to convince her to cancel her Kotodama either. <laughs> right. After looking at me for a while, she makes a strange observation. Angry? Not really. He deserved it. That never even crossed my mind. We've had our share of quarrels in the past. At least right now, no part of my brain has any desire to be angry with her. Everything she is doing now is because of my own actions. In fact, I'm more surprised that you're not angry at me. <laughs> she closes her eyes and exhales. Opening her eyes again, she gazes slowly at the snowflakes dancing in the air around her. Oh, uh, I only did it because I thought you didn't want to talk about it. We had been misunderstanding each other for all these years. I guess that even when you've known someone since childhood, there can still be things you don't know about each other. I thought it would be painful for you to be reminded of Nozomi. Nozomi? I kinda forgot. The only time I heard that name was uh, when I watched Love Live. And after that, oh my god, how many years has it been? I don't even remember. Like, at the point is, I forgot how to pronounce that name. <laughs> Probably, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, even slightly, I'm sorry. Anyways, I'll sell a little bit later that one. Yeah. Mm. She looks down.忘れてしまうのがもっと耐え難い。見れば嫌でも思い出す。望みの意志はまだ私の中で生き続けているって。I understand very well what she's saying. No matter how painful your memories of a lost loved one are, it would be even more painful to lose those memories. Now that I've regained my memories of my mother, I can see that from the bottom of my heart. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't anyone's. The villagers kept the truth from me for my own good. Even now that I've learned the truth, I hold no resentment against them whatsoever. <laughs> she looks at me sideways with a wry smile. If you mean you don't want to talk to me, I can just sit here quietly if you prefer. I definitely don't want to displease or provoke her. Then... Can we talk some more? She doesn't sound like she's trying to drive the point home to me. She's just mentioning it. But I can still feel her resolve in the words. I'm sure you don't, but that's fine with me. It's just... 
I realized once again how much I want to get to know you better, to understand you better. I need to. I suspect that because Mana was always the closest person to me, I had lazily postponed many things that I shouldn't have. I thought she'd always be there. I thought there'd always be a chance for me to broach whatever subject. It's been nice to have such a secure relationship. But security can also lead to laziness if one isn't careful. Makoto. Yes, that's me. Now that I think of it, I've never really asked you face to face about what happened the day Nasumi died. I'm sure it's painful for you to remember, but if we're willing, would you tell me about her last memories? Me, Mana, and Nozomi. It, al it had always been the three of us until that decisive moment when we had to say goodbye to Nozomi forever. <laughs> She closes her eyes and then begins to tell me her story. When she's finished, I'm left speechless. Nozomi was the last time she was looking for Makoto. Her voice is a murmur now, as she reminiscences. That's why I... I never knew. When Nosumi died, I was sick with the same disease too. By the time I was out of the woods and back to full health, her funeral had already come and gone. From how the adults behaved, I got the impression that her death was something I shouldn't mention. Though I felt troubled by it. I avoided mentioning her death to Mana, and she avoided mentioning the death of her uh, uh, of my parents. But at the same time, I just uh, at, at, at the time at the time, having just become an orphan, I was still processing my grief and worry about the future. But now that I know that Nozomi explicitly entrusted me to Mana, it all makes sense. It was not just her own feelings for me, but the ones. She she inherited from Nozomi as well, that led her to do so much for me over the years. She holds her hand up to the stream of Pollock snowflakes and smiles faintly. Mana. Of course. I do as I'm, as I'm told, gently putting my arm around her and drawing her to my chest as I stroke her hair. The silken feel of it under my hand is the same as it's always been. Nana lets out a small relaxed sigh. It does. Since we were young, we do often simply sit together, embracing each other like this, without talking, without doing anything. For one thing, I always wanted to help warm her cold body. And anyway, we were both lonely and had only each other for comfort. And eventually, our embraces became more carnal. <sighs> You should take a nap. Her small cute yawn tells me of the weariness she must feel from this morning's kotodama. Yes, of course. If you want me to, I'll hold you forever and ever. She puts her own arm around me too and hugs me tight. As if clinging to me for support. Yours is colder than uh, ever. But I'm grateful for the cold. It keeps my mind clear and my feelings vivid. Good night, Mana.
uh, by the time Mana wakes up, the sunset is approaching. Along the way, I dozed up a little bit too. It felt like mere minutes, but the day is mostly gone. <sighs> she stares in my arms and slowly opens her eyes. Good morning, Mana. Did you sleep well? How do you feel? Suddenly she looks out the bedroom door towards the staircase. What's wrong? It's already that late, huh? Anna must have heard Kokoro sing, I'm home, but I can't hear her anymore than I could this morning. Anna's cut of the drama is still in full effect. She stands up, opens the door, and starts talking to Tenere. Kokoro must be standing there. Her excuse for skip, skipping school must have been that she had come down with something. In reality, she is suffering from exhaustion from the Kotadama. So it's not really, really a lie. She takes out her hand. She's probably patting Kokoro at the head, I guess. I instantly imagine Kokoro's face under Mana's hand. Looking a little ticklish, but also smiling happily. Kokoro must be talking about me now. She must be worried for me since she hasn't seen me uh, all day. <laughs> she laughs and waves goodbye to the empty air. Kokora must have gone downstairs again. What did she say? Mana's mood is much lighter than it was this morning, but she clearly has no intention of changing her mind. Yes. As long as she's seeing that, there's no point in thinking about Kokoro. Of course, I'm sure that the longer this goes on, the more worried Kokoro, Asuki-san, and others will get. Right now, I just need to do everything I can to obey Mana's wishes and convince her to end this. Makoto? She smells crossingly. Chapter 6 We're still in Christmas land. The music still plays in my head. Oh, we're in the past now, actually. It sure is hot. Before speaking, I started walking and looked around carefully to make sure nobody was watching. It's scary how deeply habits can lodge themselves in your mind. There was practically no chance that a harmless sentence like that could become a dangerous Kotodama after all. But regardless, I always instinctively looked around to make sure I was alone before I said a single word when outside the house. <sighs> I quickly wiped the sweat from my forehead and looked up at the sky. It was clear and very blue. With nothing to block the sun's rays, just standing outside was enough to make me break into a sweat. Maybe I should have said a Kotodama to myself, but uh, after all, maybe something like, it's not hot. However, I closed my mouth firmly and <laughs> firmly and resumed walking home homeward. I do been fighting in the field since morning, but I do finish sooner than I anticipated. 
Each year closer to adulthood, I could tell that my body was grow growing stronger and my work efficiency was increasing. But as I grew up, I needed more and more food as well. I noticed again how hungry I was. I thought about the lunch man I was probably already making at home and hastened my steps. Ah, oh, Kate's okay, is are freaking gone. I'm back! As I entered the doorway, Mana was already there to greet me with a smile. Wait, I really just back in the village? Or is this like a the best kind of a thing? Excuse me. Thanks. For the last few years, her relationship with her parents had, de had deteriorated. So she would often come around to my place. I guess it's a flashback past thing? Okay. Maybe? As a rule, we villagers avoided seeing anything but a bare minimum to each other. But between family members, it was different. And yet, from what she told me, barely a word was uh, spoken in the Kozik Quasic uh, household these days. She often complained to me about how she, uh, how stifled she felt there. Mm-hmm. Everyone knew that we were betrothed, so nobody paid much mind to her visiting me so frequently. And of course, I had no objection. If visiting me was what she wanted to do. Most of all, when she was visiting, we could talk to each other freely, unlike when we met outside. I did been living alone since my parents died, so I was happy to just have someone to talk to. At the same time, though, now it's worried about Mana's poor relationship with her parents. Yeah, it went a lot smoother than usual today. Usually there would be various interruptions, like fighting water snakes and having to spend time hunting them down. But luckily, there was nothing like that today. Mana glanced towards the back of the house and chuckled. まだのところに置いてあった手ぬぐい。洗って干しておいたわ。Thanks。洗い物はなるべく一箇所にまとめておいてもらえると助かるわね。Sorry. Such things there about bothered me. Bothered me when I was living by myself. So I wasn't in the habit of paying attention to them. I didn't use the queen or organize my house much, but recently Man had started doing it for me once in a while. Apparently her parents told her to at least help out with my housework if she was going to be spending so much time here. Hmm. <laughs> she opened the lid of the pot, squinting through the bursts of steam that escaped. The smell of freshly cut rice was uh, wafted past me. And my stomach growled softly in response. <laughs> oh, here yeah, is my Yeah. She looked at me and chuckled in amusement. Seconds, please. I was so hungry that I devoured my whole bowl of rice in a few instants. Mm. Then I put her own food and served me another helping of rice. Uh, put her down her food. Dozo. Thank you. Thanks. I brought the bowl to my mouth without even letting it touch the table. Working in the fields always made me very hungry. She watched me eat impressed. But even she was quite a big eater for a girl. Her rice bowl was almost empty too. Yes, for some reason I feel like I can't just keep eating and eating today. She looked over at the crepe rice toward my dry rice. My rice is being consumed much faster now that Mana had started eating here, so she would sometimes bring more rice from her house to help out. 
Can you really do that? You brought me some rice just the other day? Is there enough rice in your house for your parents to eat? She rolled her eyes while scraping a last spoonful of rice from the bottom of her bowl. She really did seem to be a, on very bad terms with her parents. How did it how did it come to this? I do often wondered. But Mana didn't seem to want to talk, talk about it, so I had avoided prying too much. It was likely a series of small disagreements that piled up, but in the end, there was one obvious cause looming large. Nozomi is dead in the epidemic. Mana's parents truly loved Nozomi. That's not to say that they neglected Mana, but Nozomi was special to them. The strength of her Kotodama was incredible. Even at a young age, and she was a bright, cheerful, and positive girl, loved by all. She was a real-life prodigy. Everyone knew she was the village's bright, shining hope for the future. Of course, both, and I, uh, both I and Bana, also my anchor twin sister, loved her dearly too. And yet, now she's, and she, now she was gone, taken suddenly by the epidemic. I could only imagine how vast the trauma and grief suffered by Mana and her parents were. Even I was in shock for quite a while after I heard the news. <laughs> Mana served herself more rice and continued to eat soundly. She was never very talkative, even when we were much younger. Eh, she took some food. She wasn't quite an introvert, but she didn't go out of her way to talk to others. She was more the type to let Nozomi do the talking while she looked on from a few steps behind. But now that Nozomi was gone, Mana found herself needing to stand up front, without anyone to defer to. Mana, who used to be the second most powerful Kadadama user in the village, was now the most powerful one. And since Nozomi and I had been betrothed, Mana became the only remaining girl who could take Nozomi's place by my side. <laughs> Her chopstick stopped moving as she turned to me. What? <laughs> what is it? I put my rice bowl down too, and looked back into her eyes. She spoke lightly, but I could tell she was serious. <laughs> As I thought about the deeper meaning of what she said, I found myself unable to answer immediately. Dame? Well, if you want to, I don't mind. But... I choose my words carefully in my head before continuing. There is no problem at all in letting her stay the night at my house. The Chia was very betrothed to each other, which was why it was fine for us to spend all day together too. So even if staying the night involved something kinky, that would be between the two of us, and nobody else would object. Our people were relatively infertile, so if anything, the heirs would be happy if we could bring a new child into the world. But... Why so suddenly? That's what worried me. Although recently she had been spending most of her time in my house, she would always leave and go back to her own house to sleep at night. If she stopped even going back to them at night, wouldn't their tenuous ties to her family finally be severed for good? Of course, I had no right to pry too deeply into the affairs of the Quis Quisica family. But it pained me to see Mana not getting along with what remained of her family, since I myself had lost my entire family in the epidemic. She puts down her rice bowl. Nozomi 
、私が死ねばよかったのにって、きっとそう思っているのよ。No, they wouldn't think that. I knew her parents weren't the type of people to wish death upon their own child. Hopefully, no parents were. No, but they surely must be wishing to us that both Nozomi and Mana were still alive. Sadly, that hope could never be fulfilled. They are your own flesh and blood. They're your family. So you should treasure them while you can. So, ne. She sighed. I'm going to see you in a minute. 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 Not exactly picky. I just think it would be a waste to let yourselves become a strength. Once you lose your family, you can't get them back again. And she would.、Uh, and she should have known that, since she al had already lost Nozomi forever. So, I'm not going to die. 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 実の親だもの。だけど虚しい。Oh, I don't know what you want from me, but What she said struck a chord in my heart. Makoto niwa, watashi no katte de meiwaku o kakete shimatte, warui to omotte ruwa. No, no, you're not impulsive at all. I'm always happy to have you here with me. I hastily shook my head. If you really can't stand to be in your parents' house, you can stay here as long as you like. But. If there's still a sliver of hope that you might repair your, your relationship with them, all I can say is, there's no need for you to take that final step of cutting them off yourself. Eventually, that brings an end to all real relationships. But until then, there's no reason to shut the door prematurely. Makoto. Her expression softened as she picked up her bowl and chopped things again. I'm not really sure. Are we still in the past or are we in the present? But whatever the case, I'm gonna add the episode here. Subscribe. Thank you.